welcome to the Metal Voice, a returning guest, the master, the master of all <laughs> guitars, the, the sky guitar and all the rest. Yeah, right. The maestro, <laughs> Willie John Roth, returning In, back. Interstellar. Interstellar Absolutely sky guitar. Interstellar, yeah. <laughs> interstellar so many cool things uli so many cool things always a pleasure to speak to you i know you don't remember me from last time but it's always a pleasure i have to guys. say now looking at you i don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do well, you fall away on the on the monitor the monitor is big but you're in the distance so and my vision isn't all that great so but if we did come face to face, I'm I'm pretty sure I would remember you. You were a you were a gentleman when we you know. You know you but of course on the tour you do so many of these interviews and, and a lot of them are like before the show, after the show, and right. sometimes I get really tired. Not not of the interviews. I, I usually like the interviews, but I get tired on tour because there's a constant lack of sleep. Don't ask me why, but the, the rhythm is just, you know, really, really not conducive to to good health so many exciting things you have a summer festival tours you have a north america tour Mm -hmm. i'm i'm hearing new music you're talking about new music from others you're i think there's like this ten thousand page book you've written perhaps (laughs) Uh, (laughs) no it's it's i i i think it's um but it's something like 600 pages or so you know a big tome (laughs) First things first, tell yeah. what tell us what people can expect on your North American tour, which is starting, I think, in September. What can what, what is what's the out what's the mapping of what's what's it gonna look yeah. like? It's um it's different from from any tour I've done before, but it's got elements of what I've done before, you know. So um it's different because it's actually uh two the, the show consists consists of two very different halves. And it's a three hour show, which sounds scary, but I've been doing three hour shows for a long time. We ha- always have an intermission in the middle and, you know, and um, I don't think uh, normally people get bored. At least that's that's my <laughs> perception of it. You know, although I don't really notice when somebody is leaving in the middle of a 20 minute guitar <laughs> solo, um, which I can't blame them for. But uh uh, this so this show is is a three hour integrated show and and the first half is called an evening with an evening with Uli John Rock and the way that came about was um, before um, COVID hit the world uh, I was actually on a world tour which has mm. had just started and it started and ended in Europe never to be seen again and that tour was like um, a one man show I was on stage. With a huge screen, uh, there were um, pre-produced movies for for all the pieces. I spoke to the the audience, uh, but a lot of it was music, and there was a lot of music, which was new music, which I wrote for this occasion, and um, also a lot of the stuff that I normally never get to play in my rock shows, you know, like orchestra stuff. And I had the orchestra on the screen and. Um, we played some of Vivaldi's Four Seasons and uh, and a lot of my own stuff. Uh, so in the first half, uh, it'll be an evening with, but you did mention the book. I will integrate like a 15 minute TED talk where I'm, mm. um, yeah, I've never done that before, but where I'm just uh, introducing the book because it's quite, I mean, there's a lot to talk about in the book and it's, impossible to put 560 pages plus a thousand <laughs> photographs i hasten to add and diagrams into a 15 minute thing but it'll be a nice challenge and um rather than being all um uh complete i will just pick certain things and, and just a taste of of what it is uh, just presented you know the book's called uh, in search of the alpha law and it's um it's a book which is uh, not about myself. It's not about um, my life on the road or my life. Uh, it is about my, um, well, the my philosophy of life. You know, mm, something interesting. which I've, for my, uh, ever since the early Scorpion's days, I was a closet philosopher. 
Uh, I love um, I love thinking about things, um, thinking deep thoughts. Um, not that I mind shallow thoughts occasionally as well, just like everybody. But sometimes I go into this zone, and then um, uh, for me at least, interesting things come out, uh, and a lot of that has to do with the um, inner um, spirit and architecture of music. Uh, the 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 laws of music, which I found are the same laws that govern pretty much everything else that we see and perceive, you know, the if not the the whole universe, I think uh, the these laws are these fundamental laws of nature and and even beyond that, um because they also apply to our mind and and our spirit, our soul. Uh, these laws are to me very fascinating to to look at them and try to um, understand what they even are, you know. And it's not easy to put these things into words, but uh, I tried, and um, I'm quite happy with the outcome. So that's what what that is all about. So the first half of the show has uh, this TED talk, but it has also quite a few um, new music pieces which don't really fit into the band format. They're more um, orchestral. They are very melodic throughout, throughout um, where the guitar is leading, but uh, I have orchestra backing. And sometimes also I play solo pieces on a kind of nine string flamenco sky guitar, uh, maybe some keyboards, not sure yet. Anyway, so that's the first half. Then we have um, an intermission. So everybody can recuperate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, whatever. I didn't want to go into uh, such um, extraordinary detail. But uh, after the intermission, it's a full-on band show. So okay. I'm bringing my band because originally I didn't want to do that for the next North American tour. But since it's been such a long time, um, I think it's nigh on four years now since we were last uh, in your neck of the woods. I'm bringing the band because uh, I know uh, like most of my core audience want to to hear that and they want to, you know, get the full flow of also the my earlier um, <laughs> musical existence, <laughs> including, of course, the Scorpions, Electric Sun, some Sky of Avalon, Touch of Jimi Hendrix, It'll all be there. And um, yeah, and that rounds off the show, you know? So. Wow. Three hours. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. I, that, that sound, I, just the TED Talk alone, I think, is fascinating. I'd love to see that. I'm looking forward to that because it's a challenge for me. It's something I've, I've never done. I mean, I've been on stages uh, kind of lecturing or <laughs> talking about my musical um, uh, philosophies, you know, in, in my teaching seminars called Sky Academy, but I've never really integrated into it into a show. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But, um, you know, usually there's there's always a way. I, I think it's a, it's a good idea. And when it comes to it, a way will open up. And, um, you know, maybe on the first night, it might not be so great, but I'll I'll tune in and I'll, I'll make it work somehow. That's That's my job. Well, yeah. if you need if you need moderators in Montreal, me and Alan will uh, lend our services. And trust me, it, it makes I've done moderations before. It makes a difference when you have a moderator. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely! I, I here's our application. Mind, I wouldn't <laughs> mind that at all because it takes the weight of my back. You know, I hate having to run the show. Um, right. Like this, I really want to concentrate on on the essence of, of it, you know, I'm not really an entertainer, you know, I've, I've never been good at that, or at mm -hmm. least I don't see myself as an entertainer and the moderator can put a different spin on things, you know, so you're very welcome, you know, All right. so, um, but we haven't, as far as I know, we haven't booked Montreal yet, although um, our agent is on it, he's on, on it regarding uh, Canada, because I originally, he said, no, it's too far north and this and this and this. And then I said, no, we got to do Canada, you know. Um, and so now he's he's on it. Let's let's see what he comes up with. Um, yeah. Alan. 
What were you going to say? I, I think you're on mute, Alan. Okay. Yeah, it ah. was just um, this book. Uh, where I go down to the local bookstore, am I going to find that in the spiritual section? In the uh, sorry. Oh, the oh you know, I've I've got no idea because um, the because uh, first of all, uh, all we have at the moment are test prints. It's not yet on the market. We will um, do our utmost to bring it to the market um, for for the tour. You know, in fact, we have to somehow. Um, but it's not easy because um, you know, I I didn't I didn't um, actually plan on showing. Is it like book. a size of a phone book like, or something? Yeah, I showed it weighs it. like two kilos. The book weighs two kilos. No, no, it's three point <laughs> four. <laughs> so it's much it'll, more. Let me just get go get it. I have go get it. Find Don't worry the about it. Me and Alan it'll will the, stretch the time. You know, six hundred <laughs> euros for <laughs> shipping. Think. It's so um, heavy. There you go. Nice. Love it. Beautiful. Love it. It's huge. And it's oh, got wow. all these Hold musical on. diagrams with the colors of the notes. It it wow. got it's got wow. um a layout which is um in a thousand pictures, all of which I've laid out myself, you know, and uh, I've got an InDesign program. And I wanted it to be a completely integrated experience, basically, not just a book about thought and philosophy and whatever. Um, I wanted it to be something that also tells a visual story. And you can actually just leave through it, look at the pictures and the pictures tell a story by themselves because they are completely interwoven with the text. Beautiful. And I wrote it on my big monitor with the pictures and, and, and the book. It was like one kind of um, seamless process. And <laughs> I don't know of anybody who did such a crazy thing so far. Maybe somebody did. But it came out in such a way that I'm I'm happy with it. And it wasn't easy because um, there were at least three occasions where I tried to write it before and I did. I wrote hundreds of pages, but I was never quite happy with the actual, how shall I say, tone of it, because um, a lot of it is delving deep into musical um, arcane kind of things like the metaphysics of music. And to explain to somebody who doesn't play an instrument what an octave is or a fifth, which right. for a musician is bread and butter, it's not easy in words because words are very, very limited. You know, once you hear the music, it's easy. You know, you, you can hear it. It immediately translates into your heart and soul and, and your and your mind. But to talk about it, well, I found that difficult. And then eventually I think I found a way that I was happy with. Uli, you know? how, but how it gonna... was only possible I... because of COVID. You know, so, you, so you know what was, you make a there you go it was only possible because of the lockdown because suddenly the tour stopped okay everybody's at home cold turkey and yes. it was great for me because <laughs> i hadn't even um been away from the road for such a uh, for an, such an under an uninterrupted time for for many many years and i I didn't realize, but I had a little bit of burnout because I've, I've just been traveling too much. It was insane. And so when I was at home, you know, at first I went, why am I so tired? <laughs> I was kind of, and then um, I realized it was all coming out and I needed time to recuperate. Then the next thing I know is, okay, I got to do something. And then the book and, you know, uh, all through the lockdown, I, I worked on that and, you know, and that was that. When can people buy this? Well, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. We have to somehow produce it before the um, before the uh, the tour, and it's not easy. And I tell you why not. Because um, if I go to a normal publisher, nobody nowadays does books like that anymore because they're way too expensive. If right. they print it like this, just like this. With a few numbers, it costs like two or three hundred dollars a piece just to print it, you know. So publishers would immediately say, 
okay, well, you got to change this and this is not commercial enough and this and a whole bunch of different cover. And I don't want any of that. I well, Because when I'm doing an album, nobody tells me, oh, you shouldn't have that song or I'll play that in a different key or so. No, I mean, I'm the artist and I'm the, the guy. Um, yeah, maybe my English isn't as good as as, as yours <laughs> because I wasn't born with it, but I wrote it in English and I'm sure it's good enough to bring um, this kind of uh, message across, and um, and and that's it, you know. So we are publishing it ourselves, um, and uh, it's it's basically it'll, it'll cost a fortune before the tour, but uh, we'll we'll somehow have to manage it. Yeah. So but the plan to, is to, to spend several thousand in order to make it work, really, you wow. know. And then, uh, then if you say, where can we buy it? Well, it'll be online. Uh, some of them will go to shops, so the normal distribution channels, you know. And if you ask me which section it goes into, I've got no problem. I've got Spiritual no or music? Yeah, it, it's all of that. You know, it's um, it touches on a lot of, lot of different subjects. You'll be surprised when you read it because it's almost like a movie. It develops and it goes into all sorts of things and get quite an arc um, to it. So I wouldn't know where to put it. You could put it into almost anything and and get away with it. You know, which is um, great. We we will we will see. Now, I think it is a kind of if if the, the if you look at the essence of it, it's it's all about. Um, you say, is it maybe in the spiritual realm? I would yes, I say yes, because it's it's all about finding yourself through um, the um, looking at the world through the eyes of music, through harmony, rhythm, or lack of harmony, the opposite or disharmony. Um, sounds very trite now, but it isn't when you go deeper into this, you know. I, because I tend to look at the world in musical terms. And uh, although that doesn't maybe make a lot of sense to people when they just when I just say it, but when I explain it, um, you, you may get what I mean. And uh, I think this kind of, this way of thinking can be quite helpful for other people. Uh, music has really expanded my, my mind and my way of being and i think it has the power to even turn you into a better person if you want to uh become a better yeah. person and i always think that's something to really strive for um because <laughs> we've all had a long way to go in that <laughs> respect <laughs> you know um is the, monica the guys the limit do you talk about huh? Monica in the book or you know uh, just a little bit yes of course because uh monica was very uh, much a key uh, to my um, for myself to 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 find my myself my own way. She she was like a muse. She was an extremely inspiring person. And um, I'm there are some sections. I'm talking a lot about art, also painters, painting, um, the connection between painting, movie making, and music. Of, of which there are many, because uh, the, the the laws of composition are kind of the same uh, for every medium. If you break them down to the main points, it's always a play of energy, you know, energy. Um, and <laughs> where is the root note of something? Where is the central focus and how all the other elements connect to it? Yeah, um, just like in um, a solar system. Uh, where you have the sun and then you have all the planets around it and they're all in different orbits. This is very much like music. To me, Western music uh, has always has a root note or at least normally has a root note. And that root note is like the central element, the center of gravity and all the other notes are uh, spaced in different orbits around it. And the further away they are and and uh, according to which ratio they, they are uh, um, related to the root node, you have certain um, you have certain uh, power structures. It's like a journey from step to step. And each of this, these steps, which are like musical notes, like scales, you know, 
each of them has a different meaning. And the beautiful thing is that this is all like pure mathematics, but we as human beings have the amazing ability to translate that into emotion right away. And we're kind of all feeling very much the same thing. You know, if you play a major chord to um, a little child, a baby, you might get a smile. You know, mm -hmm. if you play a very dissonant chord, you know, you might might even get a, you know, something like this. Right. They're very sensitive to that. And, and we all are. Um, we can desensitize ourselves by constantly playing uh, tritons you know like in super heavy metal or in <laughs> or in schoenberg's 12 tone music but um it's basically the same as if we're constantly eating uh over spiced food you know like right. in, in curry times 10 you know <laughs> no fresh but vindaloo and then lots <laughs> of it or mexican whatever or thai like burning thai spice um i uh I shy away from these extremes normally. They are interesting, but in music, to me, I tend to gravitate to um, to beautiful to beautiful harmonies, and melodies most of the time. Uh, sometimes it's important. It's also very. Uh, it can be very powerful to bring some ugly elements into music, particularly when you are um, depicting ugly things. Just like, like you know, I've got one track which is. Uh, you know, to, Uli, you know what I love about you? You're the last purist. You're the last purist musician on the planet. You know, you're the last guy. <laughs> I you're don't the last. No, so. I think what you are. You, you know, of this of this generation, I, there's nobody left now. It's all just crack it in, crank it out. What, you know. What and, do you mean with pure? I, I don't know. Like you know, you put art before anything else, whereas others put everything else before. Not before the art. everything else. That I mean, life more or less. and our life is more important. You know, like yeah, the yeah. like the health or so. But you're right. Art for me uh, is. Uh, or true art, what I would call true art. Now people can, of course, argue about what that is or what it isn't. But to me, it's got a very, very high um, uh, position in, in yes. what I think is important. And not just for myself, I think it's important for, for, for humankind because um, art is, is like... Is, if you consider mankind to be like a tree with which is blooming, flowering, and producing fruit, then art is one of the finest pieces of fruit that we can bring forward. And like, if you have art which was produced by a genius like Beethoven or Michelangelo, <laughs> this is um, renewing itself in every generation. This gentleman died um, like 500 years ago, um, and still Crazy. his um, his art um, moves people. My daughter was just in Florence; she's 24. So, what did she go? She went to see Michelangelo's David, like I did when I was 15. You know, and these things are unforgettable if you and if you uh, are able to um receive the wavelengths of of what you see and you understand or you feel the greatness of it um not just the artistic ach achievement but what's really inside of it you know like um i remember my dad brought me to st peter's and the, the, the big cathedral in in rome which is breathtaking and i was 15 years old and um, he showed me the Michelangelo stuff, and there, there was the Pietà, which is like the um, an amazingly beautiful um, rendition of um, the the Madonna with uh, with the uh, with the dead Christ. She's holding it like um <laughs> like a, a child, and I will never forget the impact it had on me because it was like so strong that I, I I could just feel the the greatness isn't even the right word. And there was much more in it. You know, it, it was almost like the inspiration, the inspiration. Yeah. And he did that when he was 25 and he did it out of a block of marble, you know, uh, <laughs> unthinkable. You know, I mean, I can paint um, 
pictures in oil, but um, to do something like that in 3D with a block of marble and the chisel and make it look better than the original, say, you know, um, no, uh, that is some, some amazing achievement. And uh, yeah, art over the centuries, is like a story itself. It's an extremely important part of mankind. And if you take it away, we are the poorer. We get because um, it can um, elevate us. It can um, make us, uh, uh, it, ca it can help us to be more focused. It can inspire us and all this. If we let it, and if we, if we uh, let that happen, you know, and then if some people say, well, um, they're just, um, they're just artifacts and images, you know, and, uh, we have different problems. Yes, we have different problems with global warming, you know, but is it a good idea to um, throw some uh, tomato juice on it or so? I don't think right. so. No, just to, to prove a point. I mean, I'm the first guy who would say, who would say um, yeah, let's do, let's, I mean, the, the environment and, and all this is, should be our major concern, particularly nowadays. Um, but there are many ways you can express these things, you know, and I, I think art is exactly one of the things we shouldn't tamper with because there isn't even enough of it, you know, and right. uh, I find that the generations, the younger generations of today are, um, they're very oblivious to a lot of these things because they, I call it the iPhone generation. They, they grew up with Snapchat and all this. The piece of art is their own photo, you know, and hello, look at me. And which is a piece of art <laughs> in a way, but um, we're missing out by sidelining all these treasures from the past and saying, oh, this is just stuffy, uh, whatever. We are the ones who are missing out if we don't uh, cherish them and, and protect them and um, and, and really uh, understand the, the, the importance for, for mankind as a carrier of inspiration and as uh, also as a token of what we can do, you know? Yes, we are able to um, produce warfare and bloodshed in in Ukraine, you know, uh, we can destroy uh, entire continents with atom bombs, but we can also do these things. So it's not all bad, just um, these things are extremely important as a counterbalance to all the other madness, which is primitive and at a very low um, level of frequency, mental frequency, spiritual frequency. Great art is at a very high frequency, like love. Um, it doesn't get any higher than the frequency of love. Great pieces of art have so much love in them. It's, yeah. you know, because these artists, these great artists, they were people who had that and they carried that, that inner light. And it ended up in, say, a, a Pieta by Michelangelo or in Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, you know, and uh, and Uli, Uli, we're gonna have. I, I can hear you. I can listen to you talk like all day long, but, but like, yeah, all day yeah, long. You shouldn't have asked about the book. I, <laughs> but 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 we do have to go, and we'll do a part two on this. We'll do a part two. You're gonna do on great this. at the TED Talk section of your performance. You're oh, gonna well, have everybody leaving really there so inspired. I'm I can already see it. You know, I'll start and half an hour later, somebody say, yeah, but what about the music and stuff like well, that? Well, you, you talked about the music. You talked about it. You know, we're so, going to do a part two. We're going to do a part two. Since yeah, let's short. do a part two yeah, because good. normally I do interviews that are longer than half an hour because once I get into it, you know. Oh, you just get, you're just getting so, warmed up. <laughs> I'm just getting warmed up, guys, you know. We weren't sure about the time and we hadn't booked another meeting. So... We're we're really hoping a Montreal date will be added to that tour. We're we're anxious to see you. Yeah, and, me uh, too. I'll I'll talk to the agent uh, tonight and and I'll tell him we we need to do Montreal 
you know, as long as it's not the catacomb, which it isn't. Or, that that uh, shouldn't be a problem. No, there is also a nice theater in Montreal, which I remember. I forgot what it was, but we played there once, and I, I like that one. Uli, don't worry. This show goes out to everybody in North America and globally, so it, you, we got you covered in regards okay, to... Okay, well, now, yeah, now, instead of the tour, we're talking about all of the, the spiritual stuff, you know, but you brought <laughs> that out. I didn't actually... Well, I want to know. We want to know these things. We want to <laughs> yeah. know these things. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's interesting to uh, me. I don't know. We'll do, we'll do another one closer to the tour dates. We can do another show. Yeah, yeah, we can yeah. do another. Yeah. Willie, <laughs> thanks so much. I know no, time thank flies. You. Thank you so thank much you. for your time. All we'll right. talk soon. You're, you're welcome. All the best. Good luck. Thank you.